Today we got one of the greatest fantasy series of modern times, The Wheel of Time Book 1, The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan, and well, let's get right onto it. So, first of all, this book was epic. And it basically starts with these three characters, Rand, Matt, and Perrin. They, all of these three kids, they live in the two rivers, and this is like a random town in the middle of nowhere that a lot of people haven't even heard of. And they're living there just peaceful, boring farmer lives when freaking monsters attack them and they find out that, oh, the Dark One, who is like the epic Sauron level villain that is threatening the world, wants those three dead because apparently they're going to do something in the future if they grow up to become a threat to him. And this, this is where Moiraine and Lan come in. And I'm not sure if I'm butchering her name or not, but I'm going to call her Moiraine. I hope I'm right. And basically these two are Aes Sedai and the Warder. And Aes Sedai is like the magic user. And apparently in this event called the Breaking of the World, the men, like the men Aes Sedai, who could use magic, uh, they got corrupted so men can't use that crap anymore without going crazy. And only women, women, can use magic and are called Aes Sedai, and she's one of them. Meanwhile, Lan is her warder, and from what I understand, a warder is a, a man who's very good with the sword, who kind of pledges an alliance almost, or a protector alliance with the Aes Sedai to protect them with their lives. Basically, he's the bodyguard of the magic user. Pretty simple. And Moiren sees that these three kids will be very, very important and says, okay, we gotta take you to Tarvalon, which is the city of the Aes Sedai, where you should be safe. And... Come, coming with them is Edwin, who is like a girl that has the potential to become an Aes Sedai and also kind of seems to have an interest in Rand romantically and Thom, who is a glee man, what is essentially a bard or a, or a storyteller and a carnival entertainer at the same time. And so they all go and on the, on the way they get separated due to some unfortunate circumstances that I'm not going to explain and they get separated. And as they get separated, each of them kind of find out what their special thing is. Perrin, one of the boys, while being separated, uh, learns that he, he can talk to wolves and command them and kind of walk with wolves, I guess. And he's, he seems to be able to use wolves against the power of the Dark One, which I think is kind of sick because the, always I feel like wolves are portrayed in either the evil creature way or the creepy romantic way if you get what I mean so both of those I don't particularly like but I really liked that portrayal of wolves and then we got Rand and Rand on his journey on while running from bad guys learns that he can bring down lightning from the sky and control magic and he's most likely the one that the dark guy the bad guy the dark one is looking for and and then Matt. Now there's nothing su really super special about Matt except he the blood of Manatherin seems to run really deep inside him. Now what the heck's Manatherin? Manatherin is a mountain city which used to be basically a thorn in the foot of the Dark One, who was the greatest of humans who stood against the evils of the bad guys until the very last breath. And basically two rivers folk, they're Manatherin's blood, they are descendants of that great people so but he keeps like chanting these super cool war cries while they're fighting that is Manatherin's war cry which I think is pretty epic it's a pretty epic scene it's one of my favorite scenes and they and before they reunite Thom the storyteller who was separated with Matt and Rand dies meanwhile Perrin is separated with Edwin meanwhile Moira and Lan and Neonif who kind of is a wisdom, which is like a village elder leader healer kind of person that is always a woman. And she also kind of comes to hunt them down and she's with Moira and Lan. And it's kind of confusing, but they eventually come back together. But Thom gets killed in the process. Yeah, it's, it's pretty complicated. I'm trying to cram a lot of information in a very short time. And then they, they kind of on the way heard foreshadowings about the eye of the world and how the dark one is going to try to like eat it pretty much and like destroy the world so 
Moirin's like, 100 IQ move, we should go there to stop him without, you know, getting help. To be fair, they weren't in a position to get help. Then they unite with this creature called Loyal, who is this Oirer, who can like, who's like a great builder tribe or something, and he kind of helps them through a freaking like, forgotten ways into waypoints, and they go into this sub-dimension where every step is like way more. So they go in there and they kind of fast travel to where Dai is, which is basically in the middle of the bad guy's realm. And they travel in quickly and they find the green man and the eye of the world. And these are like the people who guard the eye of the world. And the green man is like, and the green man is this entity. I think he's some sort of like nymph or something. I don't, dryad, I mean, because it's a, it's a tree. And I don't, I don't know what he is. He, they don't, they don't explain this to us in the book. But he's there, he's this ancient being who's been protecting the eye of the world, and then all hell breaks loose because the Forsaken Ones, which I assume are these bad guys that were under the control of the Dark One and the kind of their greatest servants, they attack them, um, they fight, and Rand awakens into power. Rand seems to be able to control light, slash the light is controlling Rand, and he, number one, teleports to where the army between the bad guys and the good guys are fighting. He kills all of the bad guys. Not all of them, like a bunch of them. And then he teleports again and finds the Dark One, Balzaman. I have no idea if I'm saying that right. They fight, he uses the light to cut off a cord or something, and then he dies. Then all is good, and apparently the dragon is reborn. And that's pretty much the end of the book. Now, as you can probably tell from my summary, this book is interesting and I, i'm kind of gonna get into that like right now the so first thing writing style like the writing itself is pretty epic it has that tolkien-esque vibe of that epic mythical tale it's just pretty amazing honestly and the dialogue's really cool and really powerful like scenes where moiraine are crying out in anger or or the parts where she lectures the two rivers people on how how the blood manatherin still runs through their veins. Like, that crap is epic. It is certified epic. I might make a separate book plot quester video just reading out that passage, because it, it's such a good scene. And it's just really cliched, but it's like, cliche done well. And that, that, that in itself is very much like Tolkien's work, right? And, and it's just so powerful. There's a rhythm to the writing when, when he gets serious. Now, the part that I want to critique is the pacing. It was hard, it was garbage. Um, but that, I, I think you understand this just from how confusing that summary was. Everything from the end was really interesting, but it felt really rushed. I'm not going to open the book back up. Like, really, literally, <laughs> I don't even know how to say it. Because in the last, like, 50 pages, or 100, yeah, 50 pages or so, Rand suddenly becomes powerful, teleports around killing people, and then kills the bad guy that I assumed was going to take, like, 30 years to kill, without much explanation of what the hell is going on. And, of course, of course, defenders might say, oh, he, it, it was meant to be confusing, right? Yes, okay, cool. But there is no justification for the amount of time they spend this buildup, which is over a hundred pages before the actual story starts when the Trollocs come in and the journey starts. There's no justification. Everything the first couple, uh, like over a hundred pages of the first little bit could have been shortened into less than 10. Okay, maybe maybe like 30, like one chapter. 10 chapters turned to one end, one chapter. Because it was, you had, there's absolutely no need to have that money, have that many pages for the build up. And also, the middle parts where they get split apart and all that, that took way too much time compared to the finale. The finale didn't even have any room to breathe, man. Nothing really happened in the finale. It's like, the finale was very rushed and confused. Like, I didn't understand what was going on at that point. Like, the entirety of the book 
is very well written. It's just the pacing. It felt like the start should have been a lot shorter. The middle should have been better explained and more concise. Like, I get it now. Like, I, I read the entire thing and go, okay, the middle part when they get split apart is supposed to be spending some time finding their own identities, starting their individual character arcs. And I was like, okay, that's cool. Where did those character arcs go at the end of the book? They vanished into the nothingness. They, the, I, I was like, okay, this is the beginnings of a character arc in the middle of the book, right? It's like, okay, cool. I love that. And then it was gone. Poof. And with Matt and his very crazy, psychopathic, um, super worrying uh, paranoia arc in the middle of the book, that was there kind of randomly, honestly. Um, okay, uh, Moiraine cures him, and then nothing. Nothing. Nothing about it. Nothing about him being psychologically disturbed, or nothing about him feeling guilty. Just done we good because i was crazy so it's okay like that's not how human consciousness works and even if he felt it he didn't show us the author didn't show us we're firmly in the main character perspective and i get it we needed to be because the last couple of chapters were incredibly rushed and it felt like he the author was trying to cram in a bunch of stuff that he needed for the finale it felt like this okay the foreshadowing part way too slow the part where we're supposed to feel satisfied at the ending where everything kind of comes together that that didn't feel impactful because all the cool foreshadowing and little details that we were supposed to pick up and kind of guess at the ending was so far and stretched apart that we didn't even really think about it that's why even though he's explained everything to us within like this much of the book we don't really grasp what's happening at the end because it's just really stupidly far apart like all the foreshadowing is like you know it's like well, there's one foreshadowing about the actual plot like let's say here then there's gonna be another one like here so we we, we uh, we're not geniuses we can't connect that stuff bro some of us might and by the way, I'm, I would consider myself an above average for guessing plot lines and seeing red herrings and stuff. That's hilarious. Don't cut the video. And, the, but, like, it's so badly, I don't know, man. It just felt like the pacing was not there. And the character arcs that were kind of starting to exist just kind of goes, whoa, goodbye, in the middle of the book. So... I, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, but everything else is pretty cool, I guess. And the world building is very rich, and I know we need a lot of text for that, but that doesn't justify any of the pacing at all, because it's just kind of bad. So otherwise, yeah, it is a pretty good book. I'd give it a eight out of over 10, because it was a masterpiece. It was really, really well done. Everything was great. Um, it's just the pacing just, really hindered that what could have been better like seriously i felt it felt like i felt as if the lord of the rings pacing was like lightning fast compared to this bro and we know that lord of the rings pacing is relaxed sometimes while this was even worse I don't know, it's just, I, it wasn't my style of pacing. Anyways, like always, your plot cluster and your plot cluster, pretty good book. Would recommend if you have a lot of time and a lot of patience and a lot of brain power. Or if you just want a really, really epic Tolkien fantasy that you can just kind of enjoy the world but not the plot. And goodbye.